can autogynophilia be understood as a spectrum upon which those three groups will be found? Well, I guess it's a spectrum in uh, two senses. One is um, the particular focus of autogynophilic transsexuals varies somewhat. Some really focus on uh, what their bodies will look like and what their genitals will look like. Some focus on the interpersonal aspects of autogynophilia and how they will be uh, viewed by others. Some focus on uh, dressing, uh, being made up as a, as women, but they all have in common sexual arousal by um, uh, being aspects of a woman mm -hmm. and 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 i think you know in they share more than they uh differ <laughs> mm. uh but the other aspect the, the other way they're a spectrum is that they vary in their intensity that is natal males without a kind of vary from you know <laughs> yes i i have this fantasy and occasionally i indulge in masturbation thinking about it too i need to become a woman i need to get this uh surgery and, mm -hmm. uh, and intense so, distress if they're not able to do yes so. yes that's right mm. yeah so um we're going to get on in a moment to why autogynophilia is so spectacularly controversial as a sure. subject of study. Yeah. Um, first, I just wanted to address that one of the key criticisms that that um, some trans activists and, other, and others make of the concept of autogynophilia is to say that actually um, natal women also experience something like autogynophilia. What's your response to that particular criticism of the concept? Um, yes, I, I've um, heard th that objection for years and doubted it. Uh, and just last year, uh, I, with my uh, longtime uh, collaborator and ex-PhD student, Kevin Sue, published a very large study showing it is false. Uh, we recruited uh, natal males with autogynophilia as well as natal males without autogynophilia and natal females. So we have these three groups uh, and we had very large samples and we uh, showed that natal males with autogynophilia uh, measured using Ray Blanchard's uh, core autogynophilia, autogynophilia scale were much higher in their average scores compared with both of the other groups that is natal males without autogynophilia and natal females who were very similar to each other so mm -hmm. that's just that objection is just false uh you know you, you do get if if you speak really vaguely uh to people who don't know anything about autogynophilia then some women will say, well, yeah, I, I kind of uh, find it sexy when I dress up and think about, you know, what I'm wearing and so on. And it, it is true. Uh, there are some really interesting fundamental differences between male and female uh, sexuality that uh, we may or may not get into later. But autogynophilia is not one of them. Mm. Mm. And um, am I right in saying that most men who, do we say suffer from autogynophilia? I mean, it clearly can be a very burdensome thing to experience. Yeah. People who, men who experience autogynophilia. Um, experience is better. That, yeah. So this is suffer, the men who, the, who suffer, they are suffering from autogynophilic gender dysphoria. And mm -hmm. not all men with autogynophilia develop gender dysphoria 
Interesting. So some men would just sort of happily cross-dress in their spare time and it would never cause them acute distress at any point. I uh, I wouldn't say never because it's mm-hmm. going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be a little hard when they're in self-discovery mode because, you know, it's, it's a weird thing that most uh, uh, teenage boys – for example, are unlikely to understand right away. And also, uh, you know, later on, uh, to the extent that they uh, have uh, partners like uh, girlfriends and wives, uh, that's often going to cause some distress, but they're not going to suffer in the sense of uh, extreme dysphoria where they um, hate their current selves for not being female so men who experience osteocalophilia a large-ish proportion of them is the impression i get would really they don't identify in that way they feel very uncomfortable about being described as such and in general are quite resistant to the whole concept of osteocalophilia is that fair to say that that's a even a majority of so it, it? It, it's it's very hard to know uh, what the attitudes of uh, most uh, autogynophilic persons is because it's hard to recruit a representative sample and survey them. But mm-hmm. uh, there is certainly a subset of them that hate the idea and... Uh, I think that there are two reasons why they hate the idea. Uh, First, they consider it to be uh, bad uh, public relations uh, because they think people will be more tolerant of them as transgender if they think, if they believe the, the same old story that they're women trapped in men's bodies and so they had to change. Then if they believe that they have this unusual sexual interest, a paraphilia uh, that is uh, satisfied by changing uh, their bodies. Um, The other reason is deeper uh, and maybe more important even, and it is that um, people with... uh, autogynophilic gender dysphoria, they have this deep need to think of themselves as like women. And the theory of autogynophilia says that they're not like women. They are men or males with this unusual paraphilia, which is really only found in men. Uh, The... uh, Trans, transsexual uh, uh, writer and uh, uh, sex researcher, Anne Lawrence, who is a brilliant researcher of autogynophilia, entitled her book, Men Trapped in Men's Bodies. And that, that's what autogynophilia is. <laughs>